to earn some quick bucks. In Maradong, there are few well-connected individuals who are easily recognized and who play such dual roles. They should avoid being involved in any local council projects in whatever form of unjust enrichment altogether. Furthermore, the current council secretary who has long held this bushy position for many years has his term of employment extended again lately. If not mistaken, it is the third time this council secretary has his term of employment extended. Are there not any other capable individual in Sarawak who can replace this secretary? Surely, in the council itself, there are other younger, eager and equally qualified persons waiting in the wings to be promoted to that position. To have a better and more efficient hire of local government, it is high time that we should reintroduce the local government election. Local councillors should not be appointed according to political affiliation. We should follow the steps of Selangor and Penang State Government in clamoring for local council election. If local council election is re-implemented, we should have a more accountable and responsible local government. Mr. Speaker, Sarawak has 23,700 graduates, including master and PhD holders, as at the end of 2009, who are unemployed, while some 50,000 of us are according to official statistics, are out of work. Yeah. However, the true picture is that there are thousands and thousands more, especially women, who are both underemployed or who can only be categorized as the undisclosed unemployed. If we take into consideration the many thousands of young Sarawakians who are working in West Malaysia, Brunei, Singapore, even in Russia, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Island, the unemployment figures for Sarawak could possibly more than 10%. Yes, yes. Why is it that in the past 18 months, some 300,000 Malaysians, many of them are skilled and qualified, chose to immigrate? You can meet so many people from Cebu, Sarika, even Pindango in such places like Australia, England, New Zealand and other countries and cities around the world. These Sarawakian immigrants, especially those from the central region of Sarawak, left because of the serious lack of job opportunity here. Where are all the jobs if there is such so much development in this part of the state? There are hardly any major industry even after half a century of being rule. On the contrary, if really there is so much development going on with lots of jobs, there would be big influx of workers rather than an exodus of people from the central region. Every family has one or more family members working beyond the boundaries of the central region. Speaker, therefore, this state government has failed the people of the central region, which remains the poorest part of Sarawak, which in turn is still the poorest state. In Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. The so-called visionary team now led by the second Prime Minister has failed and has led the people of this region down miserably. Yeah. Our firm stand on the land policy is still automatic renewal for 99 years for all land leases and for land under section 47. It should be lifted automatically two years after its imposition. For NCR land, there should be proper surveying done so that individual titles can be issued to the rightful NCR claimants. There have been several complaints from NCR land owners about their land, which has been great. Recently, in my constituency, there are 30 native claimants whose spokesman is one called Andrew Malang Anak Uma, claimed that their NCR land of more than 150 hectares has been great. Their land is now held under Lot 11, Block 203, Sarika Land District, with an area of 284 hectares. This state government has unjustly alienated their rightful land to Sentiasa Samara Sendran Bahad. How can these NCR land owners not be notified of the alienation of their land? Why were they not compensated adequately and justly? It is high time that this improper and unlawful land grabbing policy be stopped. Due legal rights should be given to protect their rights of these NCR land owners. All of us here must and should have the decency, conscience and moral obligation to protect their rights over their land. The BN government has proudly promoted the slogan of One Malaysia, People First and Performance Now. Does the State Chief Minister of Sarawak really subscribe to those very sweet sounding slogans? Does he genuinely subscribe to the People First slogan? All too often in coffee shop, one hears about his tremendous wealth spread around the country and elsewhere. He controls the state's finance and all the natural resources in the state. As such, it is undeniably his prerogative to give land and timber concession to whoever he likes. In respect of Block 79, Block 5, Balingan Land District, with a total acreage of 6358 hectares, i.e. 
0.1010 acres of prime land. Why should this vast tract of land, valued at 78 billion ringgit Malaysia, be alienated to one Dorman company registered on 27 March 2008 without any trading records? This company is called World Sign Cover Sunram Bahad, company number 811309 8 90% of the company's shares are owned by Dr. Razia Binti Mahmoud and Dr. Robert Juni. They are the chief minister's sister and brother in law, respectively. Dr. Yeah. Minister agree with me that this is not people first, but his family first. Yeah. We have plenty of land in Sarawak, but now it seems a few family members are favored while. The rights of the people are being compelled. You generous. I'm going to the next issue. When previous Prime Minister Tun Abdullah came to power, Malaysia's International Corruption Index stood at 37. Regrettably, the index has dropped from 47 in 2008 to number 56 in 2009. Our country is riddled with numerous high-level corruption cases and cronyism, which are all symptomatic of the APN ritual political domination. The cost of corruption a year is estimated at more than 10 billion ringgit. This is an understatement. Corruption, which permeates through all levels of government, agency and industry, is inherently cancerous, and if not held in check, our nation may be doomed. One such recent scandal involved in the latest series of national scandal relates to PKFF sect. Its extent and seriousness are frightening and truly justifying a royal commission to be set up to investigate right to the bottom of it. This scandal has wandered as much as 12 billion ringgit Malaysia of the taxpayers' money. Today, unfortunately, only a few Iganglis were rounded out and caught. None of the big fish have been netted or charged. These voracious fish are still swimming freely, even though they are the masterminds who have devoured millions and millions of the people, blood and sweat money. So sad indeed, they are being well shielded in safety nets, nicely protected and cushioned from any danger of prosecution. These corrupted individuals are totally devoid of any sense of morality, ethics, priority and decency. Their moral standards and religious belief and principle have collapsed altogether in the face of billions of ringgits. With this sort of golden and sinful white and light persons eating and consuming into our national and state coffers, it won't be long before our country will turn into another Greece or Iceland, which would require the financial assistance of IMF, especially in view of the fact our national budget deficit is already running into more than 3,600 million. The new MSCC has so far proven itself to be a weak, inept and deficient body, unable to round up, charge and convict any of the big fish, be they businessmen, well-connected politicians or even ministers. Abuses of government funds, which all belong to the people, are rampant. MSCC is unable or dare not investigate corrupt practices by the relevant departments. How does the state government explain the construction of the Sarawak International Medical Centre, which costs more than 350 million, with only 168 beds? It is being left in Kota Samarahan underutilized, and not even the federal government wants to take over this state project. Despite the 350 million ringgit having been, have been spent, Kuching today still only has one general hospital, having 400 beds only for a whole population for more than half a million. How can a 30 million ringgit college in Cebu, supposedly the proudest pet project of SUPP, with a board of directors which consists of the second finance minister of Sarawak's family member, be sold off for one ringgit only? Not even a chartered accountant can comprehend the rationale behind the deal. Would the second finance minister dispose of his multi-million palatial mansion for one ringgit? Surely not. Now that it has been proven beyond reasonable doubt that SUPP is superb in achieving a safe